Hello everyone and welcome to Sky Scholar. Today I would like to discuss three lines of evidence from continuous spectra that the Sun is comprised of condensed matter. These have been described in detail in these three papers linked in the description. For 80 years we have known that the chromosphere of the Sun emits a weak continuous spectrum with a 4700 Kelvin blackbody curve at the extreme limb. The problem is that it is nearly impossible for the standard solar model to produce this spectrum since the solar spectrum at the photosphere is being explained by complex opacity mechanisms which are unlikely to occur in the chromosphere. This previous video explains the process in detail. The chromosphere in the standard model has a density of only 10 to the minus 12 grams per centimeter cubed and cannot come close to replicating that process. The presence of a continuous spectrum in the chromosphere is easily explained by condensed matter. As a result, I believe that the chromosphere does possess condensed matter, which takes the form of non-metallic dense hydrogen interspersed with gaseous plasma. We will return to this idea later. Next, let's discuss the corona, which also has a continuous black body spectrum. This spectrum is 1 to 100 million times weaker in intensity than that from the photosphere. The corona is easily observed during an eclipse and is divided into three parts. First, there is the inner K or continuum corona, which is the dominant feature of the corona out to about 2.3 solar radii. Second comes the F or Fraunhofer corona, which usually has an oval shape. Then comes the outermost or T thermal corona. Each of these components of the corona differ depending on the type of spectrum found. The atmosphere of the sun is also characterized by an E or emission corona, which corresponds to coronal emission lines from varying elements at different elevations. Interestingly, the K coronal spectrum lacks the Fraunhofer absorption lines of the photosphere. These lines were discussed in this video. The appearance and extent of the K corona changes with the solar cycle. In the standard model, the K corona is thought to have a density of less than 10 to the minus 15 grams per centimeter cube. That makes it even harder to account for the production of a continuous spectrum than for the chromosphere. To explain this, solar physicists propose that the K-coronal spectrum consists of photospheric light scattered by relativistic electrons, causing the Fraunhofer lines to disappear. This proposal is not reasonable. In the standard model, the vacuum-like density of the K-corona cannot provide this reflective surface. What makes matters worse is that transient coronal structures such as prominences and coronal mass ejections also produce continuous spectra. Their emission provides yet another line of evidence that the Sun is comprised of condensed matter, as relativistic electrons cannot be invoked in this setting. Instead of relativistic electrons, it is simplest to recognize that the K corona and coronal structures are self-luminous and comprised of condensed matter. These structures cannot display Fraunhofer lines because at these elevations the corona does not possess enough overlying free atoms and molecules to enable the absorption and formation of Fraunhofer lines. The K corona and coronal structures are not reflecting or scattering photospheric light, but are producing their own light. I have proposed that this material should resemble type 1 photospheric matter which has been ejected from the photosphere into the outer atmosphere and remains self-luminous. Another interesting aspect of the Cape Corona reported long ago here is that its continuous spectrum becomes increasingly red or cooler at higher elevations above the photosphere. This implies that coronal temperature does not rise from 5,700 degrees at the photosphere to millions of degrees, but rather cools down as expected. We will return to this topic in future videos. Beyond the K Corona is the F Corona. This is a region of the Sun, which is also the site of a continuous spectrum, but this time with Fraunhofer lines. In the standard model, this photospheric light is scattered by dust particles instead of relativistic electrons. 
However, it makes more sense that this is simply an extension of the K corona, which is now further cooled and as a result loses its self-luminous properties. The F corona thus becomes reflective and is indeed reflecting photospheric light. But again, nothing distinguishes the K-coronal material from F-coronal material other than simple cooling, which causes a loss of self-luminous behavior and the adoption of reflective properties, as would be observed for many reflective materials on Earth. In the T-corona, further cooling occurs, the ability to reflect photospheric light disappears as the material is now well removed from the photospheric surface and is probably no longer able to maintain any metallic character. We are left solely with thermal emission of the black body type in the near infrared at lower temperatures. To recap, in the standard model, temperature increases above the sun's surface. The model uses relativistic electrons to scatter photons in the K corona, something which has no laboratory basis, and dust scattering in the F corona to explain emission at these elevations. The liquid metallic hydrogen model explains these emissions with the simple cooling of metallic hydrogen with increasing height above the solar surface, changing from being self-luminous in the visible for the K corona to reflective in the F corona and finally to emissive in the infrared in the T corona. If you enjoyed the video today, support the channel with a like and subscribe for more videos as we look more closely at the sun the stars, and beyond. Comments are always welcome down below, and I'll see you soon on our next video.